Well, as I mentioned at the end of the clip I was doing on Excel dashboards, there's a couple of things that you might want to take the time to learn. They're not that hard. They're just a bit convoluted. But once you know how to do them, um, you can walk through the steps very simply. It's customizing your slicers. I find the default slicers that come with Excel are limited. Um, many of them I don't find particularly attractive in terms of their visual impact. In fact, some of them are actually quite horrible. Um, you do have the option of making your own. It's a bit tricky to change them. There are certain limitations on slicers that maybe we'll see change over the years. But for now, this is the way they work. So here's the dashboard we built. Um, didn't take very long as you've, as you've figured out. It is functional. In other words, I can now review the entire budget of the United States of America over three years in terms of the 2005 actuals, the 2006 enacted, and the 2007 requests. Very simply, that was my purpose in do building this dashboard. I wasn't looking for details, and like most dashboards, they're always intended to serve specific needs. They can't answer everything, so it's always important to know what is it you're trying to answer. If you need to answer another question, build another dashboard. Once you realize how easy they are, um, there's no fear involved in building them. But again, it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to them. And they all have little quirks. For example, here's one that I find I don't particularly, you know, is it a value? Is it a negative? I don't know. You'll notice that as I pick the buttons here, all of the items in the department chart are sorting to the top, meaning these are the ones that apply and these other ones don't. So these, in terms of ineffective programs, these are the departments that have programs that have been identified as ineffective. I find in cases, though, I'd prefer that the chart remain in its alphabetical order and just stay locked and not move the buttons around. That's very simple to do. You just go under Slicer Settings and unclick that box. So you won't show the ones with data last. Essentially, it'll just leave things alone. Now, when I make the choices, things stay in their position alphabetically. It's a choice. You can either move them around or not. There's other choices you can make on slicers like that. Probably you can just check them out best, see which ones you like. So back to the topic, which is how to make custom slicers. So start off by taking, you know, you'll take the stock slicers. There's, you'll find when you do click on that, you'll notice the option buttons for slicers opens up. And as we mentioned earlier, there is a now, here are the light or dark standard uh, templates. So again, you can just walk through those and decide if you, one of those is preferable. That's okay. I find ones like these ones, they're just painful to look at. I can't imagine looking at these on the screen and trying to read them. These things almost are in, you know, I can't, they're almost incomprehensible. So you do have choices here. I've actually created two custom ones already where you can pick this one, for example. Let's just take this one as a template. Right-click on it. You have to duplicate it. You can create a new custom example um, format. I'm just going to pick something completely ridiculous so that you'll be able to see it. Um, I'm going to make this one red. Okay. Now I have another custom, must be this one. So it's now available. I can apply it to this slicer or I can apply it to that slicer. Obviously that looks pretty horrible. Again, the idea is that you can then control all of the attributes of a slicer. I can move that one to this. I can choose this one from my list of custom ones. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to figure out how to make them stick in the application. They seem to be file specific. So in other words, this is great as long as I'm in this file. As soon as I go to another file, they'll be lost. And I'm kind of digging in to find out where is it storing these custom temp templates and if possible, can I keep access to them in other, uh, other files because it's a pain to have to build them time and time again. You'll notice too now that when you go up to your options and if you open up one of those custom templates, You'll be able to now, you can modify it, but of course you always first have to duplicate and then modify. 
That's the key. You'll also see here, which is quite uh, daunting in a way, to figure out all of the various comp compartments in a slicer and all the different ways. Each one of these is separate. You can format the color, the fonts, um, the usual choices that you've got here, the patterns, and, and so on. Understanding, okay, how do you want, in this case, there's selected items with data, selected items with no data. How should it look when you hover it with data or hover with no data when it's selected versus unselected? In fact, it took me a while to actually figure out all the various combinations and permutations of slicers and slicers interrelating. I don't think I've ever gone through it and changed all of these items. Just It's just so complicated. But again, if you look at your slicer when you start, you decide, is this actually functional? Actually, I don't like this yellow one here, to be honest. Um, probably want to change that. I could make the fonts bigger. I think they're too small here. You cannot, there's no way to wrap fonts in slicers. So for example, I can't deal with this problem here by making, um, you know, by wrapping the text. I could make the buttons bigger. I could make them taller. If I choose, then I could make the font bigger. It might work a little better in this box because I've got lots of real estate to play with here. So again, it's a matter of trial and error, experiment, see what, what works for you. There's no standard solution to any of these things. You've got all the usual things here that you can change if you decide you don't like this particular chart. Um, you can move it over. I notice that when I've opened this up in Excel 2013, all of these boxes have now opened. So I've got filters and uh, the pivot charts, the format chart areas are all here. So 2013 is definitely a great tool if you can get access to it. I'm lucky enough to get it for a discounted price through my employer. But none of the things that I've shown you here require 2013. You can do them in 2010, but you have to have at least 2010. 2007 does not have slicers, nor does it have spark lines, which is a whole other topic. Anyways, good stuff on slicers. Uh, they're so underutilized, I don't think I've seen anyone use them anywhere else. So be the first. Again, you always get way more credit for doing this stuff. And then once people get onto it, then you can move them on to the stuff in 2013, which is their true BI stuff.